Now, the Alliance Party is holding its conference this weekend. Nothing wrong with that, you say, but it's only six months since the last one. David Ford's here to tell us why. But first, uh, Mr Ford, you're just off the plane from Washington this morning. What are your impressions of how Northern Ireland came across, uh, of course, the terrible events of the last uh, weeks, but how did it come across in Washington? Well, clearly people were thinking of the terrible events. What I think was very important to see was how strong the American opinion is standing with the people of Northern Ireland against the small number of terrorists. In the past, we haven't seen such unanimity at home and we haven't seen such unanimity in Washington. And I think that's very much to be welcomed. And uh, on the economic front? Well, the economic front didn't feature particularly in Washington. It had featured in Chicago and New York and in California for the First Minister, Deputy First Minister. I think there's still a recognition that Northern Ireland is a place in which business can be done. The question is whether anybody in North America is wanting to do business in Europe at all. All right, your business this weekend is a party conference. Six months after the last one, explain. Well, you may recall that we had an earlier than it should have been assembly election in 07. Peter Haynes spoiled our conference by arranging the election to take place just at the time we'd fixed conference. So we had to put it back to the autumn, but we're now getting back after two years onto our normal spring arrangements. So it fits in with the Lib Dems as well? Well, I think all three main parties in GB have an autumn conference as the main one and a spring conference as the minor one. OK, what news do you have for them in the last six months? Nothing really has changed for you, has it, as a party? Well, I think there, there has certainly been a greater concentration on the differences which exist within the executive having been finally resolved, but the need to ensure that we tie that down and we don't just see people going back into another five-month sulk later this year. I think it's also seen that, particularly in the light of the dreadful events in Antrim and Craig Avon, that we need to see justice devolved to Northern Ireland in order to underpin the whole of devolution and to act as a simple way of telling the dissidents that everything is now working locally. In the last few months, you or members of your party have accused uh, the main parties of playing games, of lacking maturity, of being out of touch with reality. Do you think the events, the terrible events of the last few weeks have brought them closer to reality, have changed the realities of the executive and the assembly? Well, Monday of last week, I stood up in the assembly and I praised Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness for the leadership that they had given. And I said at the time that I wasn't the greatest fan of the executive, what they'd done up to now. But I do believe that when they get it right on something as desperately serious as those murders, it was my duty to tell them they got it right. I think the key issue is can the parties currently in the executive actually hold together and keep getting it right? Can they deal with other important issues like education? Can they deal with the whole issue of public investment? It's not just a matter of standing together almost negatively against the terrorists. We've got to see people working together positively to put forward suitable policies for Northern Ireland in the face of an economic recession and most of all policies that will build a shared future. Do you think that the recent events have brought the devolution of peace and injustice closer? I think they may do. I think we need to see over the next few weeks whether we can hold together the way that people have done over the last 10 days. I do believe that when Reg Empey spoke in the House that Monday morning, he got it wrong. He said that this was a sign to put it off. I actually think if we can get it right and if people continue to hold together, there's every reason why we should see peace and justice, uh, policing and justice uh, devolved uh, later this year. David Steele memorably told his party conference in 1981, go away and prepare for a government. Is that what you're going to be telling your party conference with a view to taking the policing and justice seat? Well, I think he said it in the context of a pending election. I'm certainly going to tell my party to go back to their constituencies and prepare for a good election result for Europe. Probably the best election result that Alliance will ever have had on its own for Europe because I believe people are turning to us as they see that we have constructive positive policies on a shared future, on the economy, on the environment. Mm. I think the issue of whether we will see the devolution of justice is actually now a matter for some hard negotiation with the Treasury to see, for example, that the police have the necessary resources to fight terrorism mm. in a way that hasn't been anticipated. Sure, but, but you're on record as saying that the Alliance Party wasn't interested in having a few sweets thrown at them in terms of the, the policing and justice ministry. But uh, is that how you still feel? Well, what was on offer last summer was nothing more than being a glorified messenger boy. We've now seen in the latest proposals for devolution that the Minister of Justice will be a real minister with real powers, a seat at the executive table, the same responsibility as other ministers. And so I you'd grab it with both hands? Uh, 
And I have said all along that we will play a constructive role if we can help to provide stability in this society. Mm -hmm. I've also said we will not be a pushover. And I've said that there are many things that need to be resolved before we look at the personality of the minister. Yeah. You can't be in opposition or in any kind of pretend opposition if you're in the executive, though, can you? Well, we've currently got two parties pretending they're in that position. I actually agree with you. No, you can't be. Mm. If the matter comes... So does that, that compromise you in that sense? No, I don't think there's a compromise at all. I think that if there is an Alliance Justice Minister, and it's a very large if, then the Alliance Party will not be filling the opposition role that it has done up to now. Mm -hmm. It does mean that our members in committees will be continuing to hold ministers to account on individual topics, which is what mm -hmm. committees are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But it uh, does not mean that we would then pretend that we were in opposition if we actually had a minister and the executive. You also said, uh, I care too deeply to prop up uh, a failing sectarian and sectional executive. So it's very much in your interest to be saying now that you think uh, the, the winds are set more fair for the executive. Well, if you think that my response to the tragedy in Antrim and my constituency was based on some calculation like that... I wasn't talking specifically to, no, about that. But, but in, in the face of what we have seen mm. over the last 10 days, mm. I have called it as the executive stepping up to the mark for the first time because I believe that to be the case. Mm. It's nothing to do with whether or not an Alliance member might be joining them. Do you believe the recent events make it more necessary to have devolved policing? I think one of the issues which may have some effect against not the hardcore terrorists but those who might turn a blind eye or those who might give some sort of low-level support one of, the, one of the best ways of standing against them is to say justice is now devolved, is in the hands of the Assembly, because part of the claim is that uh, those powers still rest with ministers from Whitehall. And I therefore think that we do need to look seriously at that, which is why there needs to be some serious negotiation with the Treasury over issues like resources, over the numbers of police officers, mm. and over a whole range of policies. Yeah. You said uh, there was evidence of people turning to the Alliance Party. Where is that evidence? I've certainly seen evidence in my own constituency when I've been out and about over the last few months knocking doors, keeping in touch with people. But nothing said, that you can show me a piece of paper and say this proves that uh, no. more people are flocking to the banner. Well, I could, I could look back and say um, the two recent by-elections we've had in Dromore and Inneskillen mm -hmm. both produced modest increases in the vote for Lyons. I'm not claiming that we're going to win an overall majority at the next election. What I am saying is even in areas where we had no electoral history, we did well in those two by-elections. And I believe that we have the, you know, the opportunity through the European election mm. to wage a campaign across the whole of Northern Ireland. And I believe on the basis of what I'm seeing and what colleagues are seeing in their day-to-day -day contacts that we will have a good election. Mm. Uh, Mr Ford, not only are you just off the plane from Dublin, but from America, of course, but you've also been visiting your first uh, grandchild. Are you going to be able to stay awake for this conference? Well, I don't have the responsibilities at home with the grandchild, I'm happy to say. I think a good night's sleep and I'll be in good form All for right, Saturday. Well, congratulations. Thanks very Thanks much. You.